This issue of the Science Screen Report has been presented as a service to the community by Sandoz Wander Incorporated, East Hanover, New Jersey. Sandos Wander means research for products which improve the quality of living, pharmaceuticals to maintain and improve health, colors and chemicals for the things we use. A Sandos Wander product can be found in almost every American home. Sandos Wander brings you the Science Screen Report. The Science Screen Report, presenting each month the latest discoveries, developments, and applications of science, engineering, and medicine made to solve the problems of modern life. A few miles off the Florida coast, the Florida Aquanaut Research Expedition, Project Flare, recently completed a study of reefs, sponsored by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Flare utilizes a moored catamaran called Lulu. It supplies electricity, air, and communications through cables to a three-person mobile habitat called Edelhab, which lies 45 feet underwater. University of New Hampshire students picked up the steel hull from the government and converted it to a crude underwater shelter. Later, NOAA gave the school a grant to refine Edelhab and outfit her to work with Lulu. Basically, Edelhab is an open-bottomed vessel the size of a small suburban bus sitting on legs. Water is kept out by continuously pumping in air, the overflow bubbling to the surface. Nine teams of two or three scientists each live there for several days in succession. Each team has a specific objective. Unlike other undersea bases, Edelhab is portable and is intended to be picked up and carried from one research site to another. Staying on the bottom, the oceanologists quickly become an accepted part of the environment. The study of the reef's ecology includes investigating a variety of coral life and a polyp colony forming brain coral. Symbiosis between algae and coral is the backbone of the reef's ecosystem. The algae living inside the coral use coral waste to make coral food. Another species, Gorgonian coral, aligns itself at right angles to water currents. Selected specimens are photographed at regular intervals. A set of grid lines helps the divers systematically collect samples and data.
Women aquanauts, as well as husband and wife teams, went below. Among other things, they found a curious, unexplained disease in reef fish. Living in Edelhab resembles life in a cramped mobile home, one with very high humidity. New findings are discussed with topside team members. Arrangements were made for unusual plants collected to be grown in the laboratory for the first time. Though Edelhab is homey, there's no way to cook below. Instead, the surface support team sends down hot and cold meals in pressure cookers. Edelhab studies include a barren area that had acquired a rubber reef of 500 bound and weighted tires, positioned only six weeks before. Already, the marine biologist found it had numerous tenants, and by mission's end, the rubber reef was a flourishing marine community. Studies of it will be compared with nearby natural reefs, as well as the steel reefs around drilling rigs. Another mission consisted of three marine geologists surveying the ocean floor for clues to the past. This device, a sort of underwater vacuum cleaner, exposes ocean bedrock. Core samples revealed the history of the seafloor as far back as the Ice Age. Indications are that the reefs were much closer to the surface in earlier times. Dr. Morgan Wells, a marine biologist, teamed up with his wife, an engineer, to compare two coral reefs, one in relatively clean water, the other in the path of the Miami sewage flow. The Wellses brought along their own special instruments. Among them were several dozen of these plastic domes. The marine researchers used them to seal off small reef areas, then pump their water over sensors to measure each one's community metabolism. The health of the sample communities and their relative self-sufficiency were measured over 24 hours. Instruments nearby continuously recorded temperatures and ambient oxygen to be correlated with the data from the dome. Sunlight, the primary energy source of the reef, was measured by a pyroheliometer. The first study of a non-contaminated reef near Elliott Key, 22 miles south of Miami, showed vigorous life. But similar round-the-clock field work proved large parts of the Miami Beach Reef were dead. Whether this death had occurred within the last decade or is a long-term natural event, will await further studies. The flare scientists worked for several days under twice normal air pressure, so their tissues were saturated with nitrogen. If they had simply returned to the surface, this nitrogen would have soon bubbled out, causing the bends. To prevent this, the deep divers immediately climbed into a very small decompression chamber and slowly returned to the surface pressure over a 24-hour period breathing alternately air and pure oxygen. The waiting period for decompression is payment for the increase in bottom working time, perhaps 40%, that the flare approach has as compared with standard non-saturation diving. The divers are finally released when a doctor has pronounced them medically fit. In addition to obtaining much important new information on reefs, Flair has shown that an underwater habitat can be a valuable oceanological tool. Man is finding many things he needs in the sea, so he must ever more concern himself with its resources and ecologies. To achieve this knowledge will require far better understanding than we now possess. Oceanic understanding is a NOAA goal, and Flair is one beginning a small step on man's journey under the global sea.